<laughs> Hello, friends. It's been a while. It's been two, um, two issues. Two issues. Because goat had issues. <laughs> had had issues. Let me pin us. I am going to tell you today when we go to my favorite goat part. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to tell you more goat issues because there's been some more. There's been some goat drama. That's such a great. It was such a great issue, though. It was. It was a really great issue, and there's just one little issue, and. I, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it briefly. We are. Oh, wait, I've got slides. Here we go. My 15 year old is like, there's drama in the fiber world. <laughs> I can't believe it. There's always dra there's drama everywhere. We never get away from high school. My God. When we climb, yeah. that's my kid. <laughs> about that. I uh, um, on, I don't know what it is about Zoom. So I have been using Crowdcast and something else. But I always look prettier on Zoom. I think I must have a filter turned on somewhere. There is a smoothing, there is a smoothing thing on Zoom. Awesome. My skin does not look, does not look like this. Hey, there's Maggie Casey. Maggie's oh. in here? Yes. Melting Maggie Casey. Oh, it's, it's hot. Here too. Yeah. Uh, we are supposed to hit 105 and that is not that is not bend weather. Wow. Okay, I, I'm not, I'm not whining anymore. <laughs> oh, maybe I am. My, my thermometer says 101 right now. So. Wow. I remember when I learned that the temperature that they give you mm -hmm. is at ground level in the shade. Ah. Which is wrong. Yes. I'm in the sun a lot of when I go out, there's not a like, so I think they should give you. And other. at least most of your body is above the ground, right. hopefully. <laughs> it's swimming through the uh, humidity. At least yeah. it is in Michigan. Right. Okay. Well, All it's right. lovely to see you guys. Shall we start with our favorite goat? We're going to do goat and mix. Okay. First, I have to go through and look at faces because I haven't seen faces in a while. And oh, yeah. there's Hi to face. everybody. Happy to see everybody. And to see Jillian, who I haven't seen since Plyway. And it seems, I swear it's crazy that I feel like I'm still catching up. Um, but I think it's just because we took a while off. Um, or perhaps that this is just my normal state of being, which is always feeling like I'm a little behind. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's longer for us to get back to things. The new normal is not normal. We don't bounce. I don't think we bounce back like we used to since you think that's that. because we're getting older or because of covid both <laughs> have you had covid you've had covid already Two yeah times. Ooh. one before they knew it was COVID, like march the very first year mm -hmm. um, uh during the kids spring break when they never went back to school and it was i didn't even know what it was so of course i don't have confirmation except that it was sicker than I've ever been in my life. I did not leave bed for two full weeks. Like it's the only time I've been sick and I've been with the kids. I was just like, go downstairs, take care of yourselves. Aww. Like didn't cook yeah. for them. I didn't like leave. I was out of town. I didn't tell them because I didn't want them to like come on a climbing trip and I didn't want to like stress them out. Um, yeah. So, and then one a normal time that wasn't really bad, but yeah, and you've had it. I had it. It was really, it's the most exhausted I've ever been. I mean, I think that's what really separates it from people saying it's just like the flu is the, like the flattening exhaustion. Yeah. 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 It took me a long, I mean, not, not like people that have the extended, but only having at the time knowing that I was sick, like it was like, oh God, is this how I recover from being sick now? Am I just kind of sick for a long, long time? Yeah. Okay, sorry, that's a lot of COVID talk and we're not here for that business. <laughs> we're gonna talk about goats now. Let me get the... I wanna just say really quick, one of my favorite things, I know this is, this is out of, not what's in the magazine, but for the first time ever, I saw on social media, someone put a picture of the spine and said like, well played ply. And oh. I don't know that anyone Has ever- Has no one noticed that you no do? No one notices that I- On that forever. So on the, on the spine of ply, um, for each issue, we generally don't put stuff that's actually in the issue. We put, um, other stuff like for mix, it was like martial arts tapes, 
like other stuff that's drinks, cocktails, that kind of thing. For goat, we put like the greatest of all time athletes and like Biles and Brady. And, and so, um, and this person was like, I only noticed it because I was rearranging them on my shelf. And I was very excited about that. That's good. It's funny. All right. So we're doing both of these. And now we're going to talk about our favorite things out of goat, um, which mine changed. So I have to shout out Kiana for this illustration. <laughs> I love this illustration. This is probably one of my favorite illustrations that she's ever done. I mean, I love her work and this just makes me laugh every time I look at it. it makes me smile. Um, and when this issue first came out and we were working on it, I was all obsessed with mohair. And now that it's been a few months, I am now obsessed with cashmere. So this issue is a twofer for me. All of the cashmere articles and this article about dyeing, the natural dyeing of naturally brown cashmere actually makes me want to dye, which I don't, um, am not a dyeing person. <laughs> uh, I usually have never wanted to dye, but this Jane just does such beautiful work. And um, I've also been um, spinning cashmere. Why? Okay. Something's not working. Sorry. Oh, you're just getting people ready for me when I do mine. <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't want to share. There's the share. Where's my button that says stop sharing? Hmm. So right now we can see, I can see the screen and I can still see people up top, which is nice. It is. Hey, there I am. Um, I've been spinning cashmere too. I um, stopped, decided to stop being afraid of it and started using it on a spindle. And it is such a great spindle spin. I got this cashmere a while ago. I'm not even gonna tell you how long ago from Hilltop Katie. She does beautiful cashmere at a wonderful price. Um, Snyder spindle? Uh, no, this is a Jerry Brock spindle. Really? It's a copper head made out of Texas mesquite. Nice. Yeah, she does a good job. And it's heavier than I might have chosen, but I really wanted to use this spindle and it's been just fine. Okay. Because we make, because, <laughs> you know, whatever, we make our own rules. <laughs> I don't, I don't like being the, the, whatever, the showrunner mm -hmm. of Ply, I shouldn't say everything works, <laughs> but generally, you can make it work, but um, like reading, recently reading all of the, um, the cashmere articles, it was just fascinating of the different points of view. You know, I fell in love with our magazine all over again. <laughs> it's nice. It's I good. do that with every new cover that comes out. Yes, Mine you always one. text me that. This is, what do you think of this? It's my new favorite cover. <laughs> um, I have to tell you that, I don't know if you you might not be in this part of the discussion, but when it's, when it's me dealing with the layout and design at first, uh -huh. um, when we first go through the articles, occasionally I'm just like, oh, I don't know about this issue. And then it all comes together. And by the second proof, I'm like, yes, this is my favorite issue. But <laughs> like, I swear every other issue, I have this moment where I'm like, oh, what did Jillian do? <laughs> Not really, but I do have this moment of like, what? Like, this may not be. Why? May not be. Why did she choose these people? <laughs> what a terrible idea. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, that's nice. That's I do that sometimes too when I go through and look at things. You know what? It's the same way when I was in college. I used to write something and I'd come back to it like a year later and I would be like, wow, like I was pretty good at that, yeah. but I couldn't see it in the moment. And so sometimes now if I go back, um, so Arlo, my middle child has taken over Instagram's, um, Ply's Instagram and Reels. <laughs> if you follow those, you may have noticed. Uh, <laughs> Real but, fantastic. But in doing that, I've had to give them all of the, like a folder with like all of our old issue pictures and everything. And, uh, and it was kind of fun to go through it with them. And like, it made me feel the same way. Like, oh, look what we did here. It's, yeah, it's hard to see when we're in the thick of it all. So what was your favorite with goats? Tell us the goat trauma. <laughs> okay. So first, let me get my thing. Get out of it. Figure out, unlike you, uh, 
who does this very breezily, I am going to, I need to do it how you do it, where you, you, you need a keynote. Apparently, I think, I, oh, I'm going to present it on another screen. I'll put it on our list for whenever we talk again. Okay. <laughs> um, and maybe I'll just make this big. Sorry, I'm looking at the things that I have to I think if I just spread that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oops. Nope. That's not working. Oh, <laughs> look. Okay. Did it. Now I just have to share it with you guys. Share it. Host disabled attendee sharing screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you see the look? Could you see the look? I saw it. That was a total mom look. <laughs> that was, I asked you to unload the dishwasher and you did not. <laughs> um, okay. Share screen. This one share can you guys see it what's happening you started sharing there it is it always takes a second to hiccup itself in okay good okay so here i knew that you'd cover some of the stuff that i liked but i wanted to say this was one of my favorite things about the goat issue weirdly is this picture right here on the left i love that picture and the story <laughs> because the goat like which are hilarious and i love them all the more now after the photo shoot this was my shot list on a clipboard and we went away to take a picture and I look over and the goat is literally has grabbed it and is running away with the shot list. And there's a big bite out of it. And of course, as I'm chasing it, I'm also laughing and yelling for Bernadette to get a picture <laughs> because everything is content apparently in this new world, <laughs> yes. it was hilarious. <laughs> um, the other thing that I love is this, um, again, Kiana, the, so Megan Condon often does these like infograph things where she compiles a bunch of information depending on the theme and, and then Elizabeth and Kiana work together to put together this like infograph of like a double, double, like a two page spread. And I just think this one is so beautiful. Um, the pictures of the different goats and the, I just think it's really beautiful. And I have referred but she to got all, all the details to make them look different instead of yeah. just a goat yeah <laughs> no oh there next page goat drama or when we make mistakes can you guys see me am i here yeah i see you okay so <laughs> this drama just arose yesterday oh no i got no no and it's not bad it's essentially i think what it is is we hmm, how do i put this um there's different information and in different places. And I think depending on if you come at something from say an Angora goat breeder knows different things than someone who studies fiber, especially if they come from a wool background. Um, and when this, when we were like tech editing this article, it did not raise like my, it did not concern me at all because I have always thought that mohair does not have crimp. Um, that is like, it has curl, it has wave, but I have always thought that it didn't have crimp. Um, so I got an email from a couple different people and both are, um, are Angora goat breeders, uh, heavy in the, like associate the, the Angora association and Apparently, mohair has, I'm going to make this go forward, mohair has crimp, but it's called style and character. Style is the mohair lock, the wave, and which is what I want my crimp called if I ever get crimp. I yes, same. Style and character. I'm going to, my hair looks like a goat. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the style and character. <laughs> and so style is the, the structure of the lock, the, from what I understand, the curl or the waviness of it and character is the crimp inside it. And I think, and, and I can't be, like I said, this just kind of unfolded last night and I've been kind of researching it and reaching out to people to try to figure out the situation. And I think that the character is, is the crimp. And I'm not sure if it relates directly how we talk about wool crimp um, or not. And I plan on writing some or getting some thing put together to like put on the blog and put in the next issue. But essentially, um, I do not think it can be said that mohair does not have crimp. 
um, because the character is the crimp. And from what I understand, the breed standard is if it has, it needs an equal like balanced amount of style and character um, or else it's not considered, it's not rated good Angora mohair. Interesting. Interesting. So, but um, when I checked with the author, uh, she had not heard of it and, and raises Angora goats, but, and, and it, she also got some information from um, the Fleece and Fiber source book, which also says that while it has wave and it has um, curls, it doesn't have crimp. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's just, I think maybe it's a dis disconnection between the language. Yeah. Because when I look up, does mohair have crimp? <laughs> like when I ask Google, um, mostly what I find is no. But when I look up, tell me about the character of mohair, then yeah. I find a bunch of stuff about character equals crimp. And so um, I think it's a disconnection of language. Interesting. Um, but it, and it crimp in the same way because mohair sure is not springy. Right. So this is the, this is what I, I'm going to set to find out and I'll report back. The other thing that, that the Angora, uh, people that raise Angora took issue slightly with is that we mentioned the, or the author mentions the, in older goats and in some fleeces, um, there's a prickle factor. But I think that the idea is that they want, as we all do, that that occurs in like mohair sometimes is prickly. So is different bond or different Shetland. Right. Um, it depends on the fleece, the age, and that I think there's some fear that if people that aren't familiar with Angora or mohair um, read the like, it can be prickly, they may just shut down and not try it. Um, and so I think that it's a moment of we're getting our day, we're getting our issue, like about goat. And I don't want that to be what someone's takeaway is, is that it's prickly. Um, so, uh, but I think but that an adult goat is regular and a younger goat is softer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But it was funny because I'm also right now working on the um, loft issue, like we're, no, neck and shoulders issue. Yeah. And um, Michelle Boyd just wrote an article called uh, The Prickle Factor, where scientifically she looks into prickle, like that that term, the prickle factor, and what, and how that occurs in lots of wools, even the finest wools, if you spin them in a particular way, or too much twist, or... Um, or if you your skin is just sensitive, if you are just sensitive. So I am less concerned about the prickle factor, because I think that as, as, as spinners, we realize that can happen with any sheep. Um, or breed or fiber. Mm -hmm. um, and it's specific to the type and that particular fleece. Um, I am more concerned about the waves and curls, but no crimps. I want to make sure that like mostly that we get the correct information to people and that also I know the correct information. Right. So, and the correct language. That's fascinating. Yeah. So that's the drama. <laughs> um, let me see what's next on my... Ooh, oh, yeah, the mix issue, right? That's the next thing. Yeah, yeah, go. Wait, you're doing the mix issue next. You can do mix issue and then I can do mine. And one of ours is, of course, the same. No. Yes, because <laughs> it's the best article I've ever seen on the topic. Oh. Okay, so my one of two of my favorite things about the mixed issue, um, the covers. So the cover is this mix, which I was not, this, I did not think this was gonna work. Bernadette was like, let's just take this picture and see if it works because sometimes covers are really hard. Um, if there's not a, a, like we want it to tell the story of the issue. And so sometimes in like the consistency issue or um, like it's hard to take that and get that in one photo, right? This really worked in the end. It mixed the textures, it mixed the bat. Um, but what I couldn't figure out and which often uh, falls to me is to pick the back cover. So the front cover, we decide amongst ourselves, but the back cover. And so I, um, we're going to talk about this later, but I have a Patreon and I, now I, I ask for input from my people to uh, help me choose this. And they had such a better idea than I did, um, which was to put the photo of the stuff that made the front cover on the back cover, which I think is so cool. That is awesome. 
that was not what I was going to put there. And altogether, I think it looks way better and makes it more cohesive. And there's like an input and an output. And I just think it's really cool. And it's not something I would have, I would have even considered. So, um, you know, we all know how things are better by committee, always. Sometimes. <laughs> how big is that committee? <laughs> um, we'll see. The trick is the committee has to have one person in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that was that's one of my favorite things. Um, this that me too. Oh, okay, the best article I've ever read on it. And this for you, I don't know if you remember, but this was your idea. This whole thing with getting Emily to do like four or five blends, each different kinds, to take a step by step walkthrough of how the considerations on making the blends, and then how she would spin them, and then you had the idea to then get someone who was known for this style to then spin each one and talk about how he spun it. So yep. um, this was fully your idea and totally Woo! worked so well. I didn't so remember the, that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, Emily did this amazing article where she took these different style textured blends and I think she did four or five. And, and it really shows what I love about it too, is that it shows how much work it is yes. and why these bats are expensive. And so it's beautiful. Um, and then, so this is another, this is blend two and three. Oops, go back, go back, go back. Um, and I just think that the spread is beautiful. The article, like how it's written, the whole thing is beautiful. And then Sharon came in and did how he would spin each one. Now I will say this, he, um, <laughs> we used his photos, which I think I love when we can do, use other people's spinning photos when they're high resolution enough and they don't have very much other stuff in the background when they work in the issue. I love that. So I love having other people's hands in it. Um, but when we first laid it out, it's so many photos, like it's 25 photos for his article. And so they were small at first and I just was not loving. It just looked all cramped and I didn't like the issue because of it. And so we added four more pages to the issue so that we could make his process photos bigger and then make a full page of the yarn for each one. And it like blew me away. It like changed the issue. It like gave the issue this anchor that I think is beautiful. So I'm gonna show you right? Like his techniques over here. It really, I mean, this whole thing is like the heart of the issue. I think. Yes. Yeah. And so each one, he's got these, these close-ups of his technique. Now imagine, imagine all of this, including the big picture, all of that was originally on one page. And so everything was tiny. It was hard to like, it didn't. Yeah. So I just, I love this, these two articles together, I think are just beautiful. Um, oh, oh, one more thing that was my favorite, because <laughs> I like showing you guys my favorite things are often the things that like sneak past me or that mess that I'm like. So here's one of my favorite things. This one I told Bernadette, I sent her, our, our photographer, I sent her like a, a screenshot of it. And I'm like, what is this? And then her husband was like, is JC going to fire you? <laughs> because <laughs> this is um debbie debbie held's article on blending boards okay so i want you to look at this it's all really nice you're like oh yeah um now to be fair i code a, i photo code these um photos like i pick them i like give her the number of them and then she crops them and edits them and all the stuff but number four is what i'm drawing your attention to i'm gonna show you the close-up of it that my friend <laughs> is a leaf it's extra texture so i zoomed in on my screenshot but that is a leaf <laughs> which i just think is hilarious and bernadette's fired um no okay that's what i have. i'm gonna stop my share um those are my favorite things uh which i'm sure are often different than other. i'm like let's talk about the drama and the leaf that snuck in um but yeah that's so good. that's stuff that people may not notice or you know everyone likes the stories and the goat that ran away with the shot list the goat. Um, i love that run yeah. chasing <laughs> wish there was video of you chasing right <laughs> okay you go <laughs> all right so bum, bum, bum. 
there's that. And then I chose for the mix. I had Emily's article also. I mean, it's the best article I've seen on creating textured bats. I mean, reading this, I feel like I could actually do it, but it's so much work. I don't think I will. I'll just keep buying them from her. <laughs> Um, but it is an excuse to never get rid of any fiber, <laughs> no matter how small. <laughs> um, I also loved this one. I'm, I really like spinning from the fold. And I thought this was a really concise explanation by Michelle Boyd of why and how. And those are the best photos I've seen of spinning from the fold. I mean, you can really, you can see what's going on exactly from the tip. You can see spinning from across the top. Um, I thought that was, I thought that was really great. It's funny, Bernadette told me the same thing. She, she sent me when she was editing, she was like, these are the best from the fold photos we've ever taken. Yep, you're good. Oh, all right. All right. Also, it's a good name. Yeah. Yes. And then I've got, I'm still obsessed with this. Wait, yes. this combo thing that Maggie and I did. Um, I'm, I'm newer to fleece. Um, I was always braids, hated fleece because my first teachers made me spin only from fleece and it made me unhappy. But now I have developed quite an obsession and I'm Thanks to my fleece friends and my fleece concierge. I know you're out there, Deanna. Um, in love with Shepherd's Hay Fleece, who does, uh, Lee does this amazing, has this ama amazing breeding program. It's not just crossbreeding. She has up to eight different um, breeds in her sheep, uh, trying to find the right characteristics that she wants in the end to make a beautiful spinner's um a beautiful spinner's fleece. So I got to interview Lee and Judith was there giving her two cents on how um, mixed fleeces are the most perfect fleeces. And then Maggie's fantastic article about spinning it. And then I was luckily enough, lucky enough in my obsession to get, uh, and the sheep's name is Masala. And it was beautiful chocolate brown for 2021. And I was lucky enough to buy her fleece this year at Maryland and look at the difference in color. It's more cafe au lait than chocolate this year. And there's Maggie. This is what we get up to in our hotel rooms at Maryland. <laughs> I'm sure the hotel staff is so happy when you <laughs> they're like, what is going on and what is that smell? <laughs> um I was fascinated by this in this issue. Um I always love things in the issue that I don't really have any experience with mm -hmm. and that article coupled with the um the badger the the what what did she call it the desert badger the uh, here the, let me look i have prairie badger prairie badger okay and then the also the article on um where s the author took a cross bread yes like and then did the, the cross blended. and then blended it you know, either across, across, you know, blending in the breeding or blending in the fiber. All three of those, to, all four of those articles together were things that I, I learned a lot from. Like I did not have experience with any of those. And, and uh, that's always my favorite thing. And it made me want to buy more fleece, right? which is a problem because we need more time. That's what we need to buy is more time. <laughs> Yes, yes. If the time came with whatever it is you bought, a, a book, a fleece, whatever. Well, that's a good invention. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. What else we got, my friend? Um, do you want to do your technique? Do you want Ooh. me to talk about my obsession with the back issues? Ooh, you do back issues first and then we'll do. Okay. I am lately... Um, just to make sure that everyone knows we have back issues. I have um, lately been obsessing and I, I'm not sure why about back issues. I've been looking up all kinds of stuff. I and know I, why. I know why. Why? Because you have been in charge of trying to get an index made for ply. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> I think that has gotten into your head and we're still doing no, but I, I'm also looking for specific things. Like, 
in my Patreon right now, we're spinning. One of the things we're doing is spinning for socks. So I hauled out the socks issue. And then that had me looking for, and I, you know, I read your um, variable shrinkage or differential shrinkage article. Then I had to go back and read Maggie's differential shrinkage article in the boucle issue. And one thing just sparks another. And I've just been having the greatest time. I have back issues, both print and digitally on my iPad. So I can have it when I need to look up something quickly or as quickly as I can remember it until we have have that index. <laughs> um, I can look at, you know, I can have it right there next to um, next to my spinning chair, but not every issue is available in print. Is that right? That's true. There's uh, what first sock twist sock basics, which I didn't expect silk and maybe worsted are all have sold out several times and we haven't reprinted. Um, and mostly uh, for me back issues, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but here's a little like accounting stuff for the magazine. Um, when I was working out how much, this is how I did not know how to run a magazine. Um, when I was working out how much a subscription should be, um, I did not count in back issue sales. I didn't even, that didn't even dawn on me that would ever sell a back issue. And, um, so we chose a subscription price based on what we needed to make, right? For each issue to like run at, at operation level. Um, thank goodness I did not know and that back issues brought in income and that they do because my subscription price <laughs> would have been way off. Um, we actually, a good portion of the magazine sales comes from people. Uh, it's something really high, like 50 to 60% of new subscribers order the whole catalog of back issues. Um, I'd totally do that if I were a new subscriber. <laughs> I didn't know that. And I'm glad that it does because otherwise I way underestimated it how, but maybe it's also because we haven't raised our subscription price or anything. And and because we don't do very much advertising, but I'm always grateful that 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 income comes in. As an aside, I know that's less sexy than "Hey, isn't it pretty?" and "Don't we like them?" But well, no, it's, it's, it's sexy different. if you want to keep the magazine. Right. If you want to keep the magazine. It's like when I go to a grocery store or a any kind of retail store, and somebody's stocking, and they apologize, and I'm like, if you don't do your work, I can't shop here, and nobody would have a job. Yes, yeah, so you're right. Some are sold out and we have always thought we would reprint. Like a couple of them we did reprint several times. Um but we just it's it takes a big output of funds initially to get a good like you have to reprint. You have to print at least what 5 or 10,000 copies to get a good deal. And that is hard with a reprint because we don't need that many. Right. But if we don't print that many then the like financial out, like each one of them is so much. It ends up being like seven bucks an issue to reprint. Um, and so it's one of the reasons we haven't and why I'm glad we at least have digital for people because we didn't used yeah. to have that. It's true. And they look gorgeous on tablet and you can, you know, you have almost 10 years tucked under your arm. How crazy is that? I was just thinking that we are currently map it like doing the 40th issue and how insane that is. Yeah does not seem like 10 years. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, I want to do a magazine. What do you think? I think <laughs> it will break your heart. Let's do it. <laughs> I was just telling someone, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, in the, oh, we went to a family reunion this last week and they were talking about people that will tell you the truth. One of, um, one of Levi's aunts is a nun slash professor cool. and slash book editor. And we are talking about how she's editing one of the family. Does she also solve mysteries because right. I want that show <laughs> um, about how she is editing one of the family members books. And I was asking her like, how do you find that? Like, is that harder? And she was like, no, I'm totally, I'm totally like honest about it. And I was like, that's what you want. That's how, and I was like the developmental editor, Jillian, who's like my, like, I couldn't do the magazine without Jillian. One of the reasons I trust her so much is I was once pitching something to her, the magazine, I think. And <laughs> I got like two minutes in and you said, 
I'm falling asleep. <laughs> and I was like, that's my person. <laughs> so, um, was yeah. that the magazine? I don't remember. I remember doing that, but I don't I remember. I was trying to make it like, I was trying to appeal to like the smart, organized, like, like I was, t I was taking all of the interest and passion out and putting it forward in a very kind of mechanical way. And Tech I think you were just like, dude, yeah. really? Yes, it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. Right. So, okay, go on, I'm sorry. <laughs> you wanna do your demo now? Oh, sure, okay. Right. So this is a demo and I didn't do one from the yeah. issues because I got really excited about, um, so I've been, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit in a little while, how Jillian and I have both these like slide projects. Um, but in doing this, I have been doing a lot more like testing and sampling and experimenting than I've done in a long time, which is really like, like has me super stoked. And this was out of one of my recent uh, classes. This was one of my favorite parts. And For it's your only, Patreon, you haven't said that. For your no, but I'm also bad at stuff like that, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Um, but it's just like a four minute. I just took this four minute chunk out because uh, it was super rad and I have not been this excited every time I, you know, when you know, when you, okay. So I've talked before about how I think that we all, but myself is who I can speak to, suffer from this thing called imposter syndrome, right? Um, not all the time, but sometimes. enough of the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's a matter of, I think when you know something really well, or you've known it for a long time, you start to think about it as common knowledge. Like that's just what you know, people know this. And so I used to really struggle with teaching classes because I would feel like, oh gosh, like, are they gonna feel satisfied when I'm done that I'm gonna teach them all this stuff that's just basic and everyone knows. Um, but that's not the case. I understand that, but sometimes that like gets into your head. Um, so my favorite thing is when I go through the steps again, and maybe I did this 15 years ago, but I go through the steps and I do the experiments and I'm like, oh my gosh, what I thought was gonna happen totally happened. <laughs> like, I do know what I'm doing sometimes. I will so, tell you that happens almost every time I write an article for the magazine. I'm like, I think this is how it goes. And then I do my samples. I'm like, yes, I know. I know what I'm talking about. So this, um, this was one of those moments where I was just stoked and also amazed because I didn't realize the extent. So I'm going to find it on my thing. And, and it's about plying. Yeah, it is. It's so the whole, the whole class was about plying generally, but this section that I took out, um, was about plying like the different reasons that you ply, but the one I zoned in on was plying for strength. Um, and I talk a lot about the, the uh, diminishing returns that happen with, with all things. But if you're not familiar with that, uh, I was a fancy smancy economics major for a while in college, one of my many, many majors. And that was one of my, um, the rule of diminishing returns was one of my favorite things. And my economics professor essentially um, described it as thus, if you're not familiar, that when I eat my first ice cream sundae, it's delicious and I love it and I get a lot from it. Um, my second one is less delicious. My third one is less and that decreases the diminishing returns, the returns I get from eating those ice cream sundaes um, or my chocolate squares with peanut butter dollops on top. Um, decrease each time. And so by the like 10th one, I'm probably getting sicker than I am getting. Um, so the same thing is true in spinning is uh, with plying, you have this law of diminishing returns that you have all of these things that you get from taking a single to a two ply to a three ply on and on. But every time you increase the number of plies, you get an increase in those good things, but it increases by less with each ply. Um, and so that's part of what I'm talking about here with regards to strength. Um, I just wasn't aware at the level that it decreases. So instead of continuing to talk about it here, <laughs> I'm just gonna show it to you guys. Um, but I have to play it on my screen and then share my screen with you guys. 
Let me make it happen. Uh, that is bad. Somehow I have a picture in picture. Um, all right, what's happening now? Okay, now I'm gonna share the screen. Do you have a Mac or do you have a PC? I have a Mac. Okay. <laughs> share, I know that this should be easier. <laughs> um, okay, you guys can see that, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make it big and then I'm gonna play it. All right, so let's take a deeper look, a deep dive, if you will, on the reasons to apply. These are the reasons you hear all the time, um, but I really want to look at them because sometimes we just say stuff um, and it gets passed down and passed down. And I think we forget sometimes what it really means. And it really helps, or at least it helps me to go through the motions, do the experimenting, and see what it means and like prove it, whether or not it's true um, to myself. I feel like I learn better that way. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna share it with you guys because it's awesome. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about with regards to why ply is strength, right? When you ply, it makes the yarn stronger. And again, I've never done this actual test. And let me tell you how I did it. Um, it was very low fi. There's a hook in my mantle where our stockings go. I took a piece of yarn, the same length of piece of yarn of each of my plies, and I looped it around this hook. And then I took a hook, um, like, a, like an S hook, and I hung it on the end of that yarn. And on the other end of the S hook, I hung a canvas grocery bag. And in that bag, I placed cans of beans, <laughs> each of which weighed a variety of 15 to 16 pounds. Um, I think I had one ounces. can of tomato paste at 5.5, or sorry, ounces. I think I had one can of tomato paste that weighed 5.5 ounces. And then I kept track of how many cans each yarn could hold. So I would put one in, I would wait 10 seconds and then put the next in to make sure I gave it time um, to break. <laughs> so it was really cool. Um, I can't wait to tell you what happened. <laughs> Here is the test and I'm just gonna tell it to you. So first, the plies. I did the singles first, which was anticlimactic. Um, the single, held, I put five ounces in the bag, five ounces, and it broke. So um, 0.3 pounds is what this single could hold. All right, and by the way, this is the same yarn that we did on here. Um, these are the yarns that I tested. So the single, 0.3 pounds. And then I did the two-ply. The two-ply, whoo, 77 ounces. I had to keep putting cans in the bag, cans in the bag, cans in the bag. Um, 4.8 pounds. So from 0.3 pounds to 4.8 pounds. That's what plying did to the yarn strength. Amazing. When I added a three ply, three ply could hold 114 ounces, right? So it went from a two ply at 4.8 to a three ply at 7.1 pounds. A four ply, 9.9 .9 pounds, five ply, 12.5 pounds, six ply, 12.8 pounds. Let's take a closer look and talk about what this means. All right, taking a closer look at the ply's strengths. So the single, 0.3 pounds, that's it. It didn't have another ply to keep it strong. It just broke right apart. When I plied it, the two ply, it increased its strength by 15.4 times. So essentially, five ounces to 77 ounces is 15 times stronger, which is crazy. When we went to a three ply, instead of 15 times stronger, it's 1.5 times stronger. So that's how when you go from a two ply to a three ply, it increased at 1.5 times. From a three ply to a four ply, 1.4 times. From a four ply to a five ply, 1.25 times. From a five ply to a six ply, 0.1. So remember how I talked about law of diminishing returns? Every single time, five ounces, 77, 114, 159, 200, 205. 
every single time we increased the strength, but every time we increased it by less, 15 times, one and a half times, 1.4 times, 1.25 times, and then a, a measly 0.1 times. So between five and six, why it, it adds such a negligible amount of strength, it's not worth your time. This was awesome. I did not realize it was this drastic and it's so super cool. <laughs> So, uh, stop share. Okay. So sometimes I watch myself and I think I am way too excited and way too dorky about fiber. <laughs> but we love that. That's how excited every, that's how excited we want everyone to be about spinning. And I have like 10,000 questions, but I won't ask them. Well, about you should ask at least two because isn't that awesome? Like, so what was the fiber? Okay. And Worst it drafted, yeah. and if you use the same singles, exactly for all of it. For all okay. of it, it was merino silk, um, so it was pretty strong. It was worsted spun from a from a comb top, but my my idea was that I take all of that to mean nothing as long because it's relative, right? right. As long as I'm using, so I spun the same single. I filled two entire bobbins with the same single. And then I wound those bobbins onto 10 different storage bobbins. Yeah. So they made plies out of, so it was the same exact single. It was all plied with the same, well, to be fair, you don't ply a two ply with the same ply twist that you ply a six ply right. or a five ply, because every time you add plies, you have to, you decrease the amount of ply right. twist. So they were all plied to balance. Yes. Um, and I, I expected the decrease that happened, I expected, but I did not expect from a single to a two ply to increase the strength that much. That seemed insane to me. Yeah. Right. And for it to drop off so hard at six ply. Yes. Right. But also 15 times to 1.5 times to one point. It, it was, uh, I don't know. I thought it was super cool. And it really gave me like, it gave me some stronger opinions on yes ply it um two ply is really the biggest strength move you can the biggest power move you can make in spinning <laughs> right for strength and yes. durability i guess yeah um i also did in that same class i all of those reasons we ply i did similar tests for durability and for uh, diameter and it's all really similar um mm -hmm. in that the law of diminishing returns for diameter between my five and fifth, my four, five, and six ply, you can barely tell a difference in the diameter. Um, between with the the one that really didn't change all that much was the abrasion, the resistance to abrasion. Um, really, what I mean by didn't change, it didn't have the law of diminishing returns as much as the rest did. Like mm -hmm. every ply I added up to six ply still really did. Make a know. difference. Yeah, and mostly I measured that by, um, because the thing about adding plies for, for durability is the fact that each ply has more of itself covered, right? Right, the they protect each ply. other, like all the best friends, yep. Exactly, and so, Every time I added a ply, no matter how high I got, all the way up to seven, um, it still increased it quite a bit. Um, but for all the other stuff, the law of diminishing returns really held that after about five plies, it was it was negligible. I don't know. I thought it was all super awesome. Okay, that's my whole. Cool. And now I want to <laughs> know the difference between a regular four ply and a cabled yarn. Yeah. So my um. Uh, the the people that I'm doing this for <laughs> your Patreon is um they get to decide and that's one of the things we're going to do later is like a second plying class where we go into more applying techniques and um and look at those things which is really cool um okay so that's my thing yay my thing this time is I'm obsessed with this I'm sure most of you have seen this the um, advertised everywhere. It's the eel wheel people dreaming ro robots um, yardage counter. And this is one of these things. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not crazy. It's 65 bucks. Um, but it it's one of those few, few things in life that does what it says it does. 
really easily. Um, here, I'll show you. Uh, oh no. Why have I completely forgotten how to use my computer? It's been a while. Yeah, here we go. So <clears throat> you turn it on and it's easy to add batteries. He has it magnet, has a magnet, cl magnetic closure on it. I love um, that, by the way. Yeah, it will save what you did last time until you reset it. This was the last amount that I did. And um, it has a menu of things. You can set the wraps per inch if you want it to be a little more detailed. He has a, and I use the card that he has that comes with it. So I'm talking apples to apples, his apples rather mm -hmm. than my apples. Wait, so can you explain what that means? You use his, the card, and then you put in what the card said, and then it gives you yep. more accurate. Yes, okay. and, it, and it's accurate. This was accurate to within three yards of my nitty naughty. So, and it's way easier. And I set, and I set it up between my Swift and my ball winder when I, um, when I'm winding, winding stuff. And the buttons are are really easy to use. I mean, it's soft touch. Um, you can do it in yards or meters. Um, you can have a key beep, and this is set at 500 yards. It'll beep when it's 500 yards, but you can reset that number too. Um, talks about the battery. That's boring. <laughs> uh, and. You just set it up like this. Oh, wait, I need to go all the way around. You know, every time I use my ball winder, this is the thing that takes me the longest is figuring out each time how to put my yarn through the squiggles. Right. Seriously, like that's my. <laughs> so look how, can you see how easily it counts and how quickly? and how light, what a light touch it takes to count. Can you please explain to me why it works? <laughs> I will not explain to you why it works. I will also not explain to you why a McMorrin yarn balance works. I know, right? It just does. And I'm happy that it does. And I don't have to figure it out. But this is one of the greatest tools that I've bought like in the past five or even 10 years. I have a couple other yardage counters that just, that don't work as easily or as smoothly. Um, okay. I'm just in love with this little thing. Can I ask you, do you know if they are also, are they the company that also is making the um, level winder that you can put on? No, no, no. Do you know who that is? No, people learn. I think that I got them confused because at the last plyway, they were on the same shelf in Susan's Susan's booth. Um, and I tried both of them at the same time. I think that's why I got them. Oh, that, I've heard mixed things about the level wind. And there's some, um, some wheel manufacturers that don't recommend it. Yeah. Because it has batteries, right? right. You're, the speed that you're spinning doesn't affect the speed that it winds right you know it and runs it runs by itself now i did use it and i was i used it while talking to gord lindrum about it um oh so, i would have liked to have been a fly on the wall for that surprisingly and i know gord can be kind of crotchety sometimes yeah but you also know i love gord and he was surprisingly optimistic and impressed Interesting, because I would think how light a Lendrum is that it would pull it over with batteries in there. So here's the thing about it, though. It did not add any pull. So you know how some level winders increase the tension on your spinning, like you, no matter how much you turn the uptake down. Yep. Um, I should get one so I can really test this, but from the spinning I did on it there, um, I, did, I could spin a really fine yarn and it didn't pull my yarn. Interesting, because um, my woolly winder does pull. Yes. I, I tend to, when I spin fine, I always cross lace my woolly winder. 
So it did not pull. How it's made doesn't, it didn't pull. The things that I think Gord talked about was that because of how it is built, it can't extend to the full length of the bobbin. Mm -hmm. And so that was the biggest thing that if you are, you're even, you're winding really evenly, but if you have these gaps on the end, then it can collapse. And so we talked a little bit about maybe like getting a spacer, doing something. Right. Um, because- Well, you can just put pipe insulation. Because other than your that, it really, <clears throat> it struck me that at least, you know, and I was spinning fine and then I spun bulky and I spun different speeds and it struck me that it really, um, it did not impact my spinning. However, every time I stopped to talk, which I do, you know, you? <laughs> every time I start, stopped to talk and started again, mm -hmm. I forgot to turn it back on because it's not, it's independent. So you've got to flip it every time you start spinning. Um, I'm going to get one and see. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in it. I'm much more interested in it now. <laughs> it's, my, it's what I do <laughs> that's what you do that's what you do right on okay so do you want to do talk about new things that are coming for plyway or sneak peek for next issue um I will do a here's the little box that this comes in it's so cute you know I so I have one I yeah. just when they did not I did not they did not sell me the extra time when I got it, use it. Yeah. To use it. They did not include that in the packaging. Um, and I don't know if you know, but I've recently gotten into weaving and that's pretty much all I want to do nowadays is good. <laughs> um, so somehow the cord that I've used to plug in my computer um, is not, it says it's charging, but I'm down to 11%. Uh -oh. um, so I am going to grab my block from the other room, but first I'm going to show you the sneak peek from the next issue. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's find it. I use too many. Here's what I need. I need like a like a thing that consolidates all the stuff I do into one. I need to be able to live stream and upload videos all in one. I've got too many programs in my head and they don't work the same way. And so every time I'm on like Zoom or Crowdcast, I'm like, how does this, how's this work? Yes, yeah, so I need someone to do that. Um, all right, sharing my screen <laughs> here. And here we are and it's little and I need it to be big and Aww. okay. How pretty is the cover? That's it's not been, it's not been edited yet. So all of this stuff, by the way, is from the first proof of the magazine. So you guys get to see the stuff that's not. It will not end up looking like this. Um, big changes between the first and the second proof, like the biggest changes. It's like diminishing returns. Um, and then by the fourth proof, it's like perfect. So these are unedited photos. But I have to tell you a secret that sometimes when people send me fiber for samples, sometimes I take a tiny bit of it and I stuff it in a little baggie and I put where it came from and what it is. And now I have a really giant fiber collection. <laughs> and this is a, is a Saxony Merino from Judith from years ago she sent. And I just, it's like, it's literally like a teeny little lock. It's just a macro lens. Um, and it's beautiful. And so I thought it made a really great picture. I can smell it. I can smell the sheepiness of that photo. Um, okay, so you're seeing things that are not how they will be. This is uh, gonna be a great article. And uh, this is how our illustrations start. We have an idea, Kiana kind of mocks it up. We put the text around it and see how it looks. And then she kind of adapts it and then we, um, color it in and it looks beautiful. So I really, I think this is gonna be, we always try to have one that's like the showcase illustration article. And I think this is it for this issue. Um, yes, okay, the next thing. Ooh, this is, okay. This is, this issue is full of stuff about loft, right? We have the loftiest bats, which is brilliant. It's talking about comb top, 
um, using commercially comb top, using roving, using fleece to make bats, and what gives you the loftiest bats and how that translates into yarn. We have finishing for loft, like how you finish to get the lofty if you lost loftiest yarns, light and lofty core spin, different or core spun, applying different ways to preserve loft. We have uh, Michelle Boyd doing every style of woolen spinning you can and comparing the loftiness of the yarns. Um, then we have these beautiful projects. Um, also unedited. Don't tell Bernadette I'm showing you. Um, yeah, she would cry. She has not fixed the lighting yet. Or, um, But uh, there's one project that's not in here, but there, there's some beautiful projects. Um, we have this woven scarf here that is just really wonderful. That's Angela's, isn't it? It is. Yep. Um, yeah. Oh, look, that's, that's what I've already shown you. There you go. <laughs> Um, but that's kind of a sneak peek. I usually at this time we are, hang on, I'm going to cancel this. We are a little farther along. Where do I cancel the sharing? We're a little farther along in our proofing process, but we're not right now. And so I can only show you things from the first proof, but we shot the issue at um, Missouri town, which is the same place we shot the cotton issue, which is one of my very favorite, like, in terms of like moodiness and like beauty of, I don't know, I really dig the like moody, dark wood. Um, and so we shot it there and it was hilarious because this time, and I don't think it's because of us, but this time we had to have a interpreter, a historical interpreter there the whole time with us. In case you touch something. <laughs> and so we had every day, we had a different person, but they're in full, 1855 costume the whole time <laughs> so it was awesome <laughs> and what was mostly historic hysterical is no one else could come to the place we were and so it was just us and them and so most of the time they were like sitting there on their cell phones and they're like full bonnet and like it was awesome sweating um, yes <laughs> so that is the next issue which i am excited about and i actually I know this, I say this all the time, but- It's your um, favorite issue. <laughs> no, but I learned so much from it. Like it was, um, I don't know, I learned a lot from it. We shot it early because we shot it while we were in town for Plyaway. Which you will never do again. No, we'll do it next year because I'll forget how hard it was. And <laughs> I'm gonna give you the mom. You didn't empty the dishwasher face. Right. <laughs> um, okay. I can still hear you, but I'm just going to duck right here and get a block. Get your brick? Yes. Okay. Keep going. Well, we were going to talk about ply away. Yes. Because we've got a bunch of new things. We ask people other things that they would like at ply away or what's missing from ply away. We had so much fun coming back after being gone for two. Were we gone for two years, JC? Two years? She lied that she could hear me. Uh, but we have a whole a whole bunch of other uh, things we're adding to ply away that people have asked us to do. Where are you? And the um, the class, the teacher applications just closed a couple days ago. Did you get yours in, Maggie? Yes. <laughs> I got mine in early only because I was going out of town. Um, but JC said we've got more um, class applications than we've ever had for a plyway, teacher applications than we've ever had for a plyway. Is that true? True story, true story. 65 different teachers. Class. 65 different teachers? Yes. Which is crazy, right? Like, I didn't know there were 65 teachers. I guess they're not all U.S. There, yeah, there are a lot of U.S. teachers. <laughs> Hang on, I'm doing this. I'm doing it. I swear, I have so many cords. And also apparently so many kids. <laughs> That steal them <laughs> or cords that break. I was um, when I set up for today. Yes, I have an Ethernet connection, and that cord just died. I couldn't figure it out. I had to call for my husband, Andy. Can you figure out what's wrong? <laughs> I was glad he was home and not playing Ultimate. It's charging. Yep. Okay, 
Right on. Okay. Yes. So I'm sorry. I really couldn't hear you. I totally lied about that. You did. Um, so some of the things that we're doing, well, we'll have new teachers clearly, and everybody always has new classes. Yes. Um, so, and we are going to start doing night, more organized nightly events. Yes. Right? I'm super excited about the new stuff. And so, a gallery. Yes. Okay. So here's what we planned was that with Plyway, the first big event that we have is either the opening of, of the marketplace, which generally happens Thursday at noon. So Thursday morning, everyone's in class from nine to noon, and then they're crazy rushing to get out class a little early if they can. Um, and I taught that day and I was like, no, I'm not done. Like I needed like 20 more minutes and people were not happy with me. <laughs> they leave early also. Yes. I'm like, but we're right at the end where you get the big aha moment. Um, <laughs> where I can say, ha, you're spinning woolen and you didn't even know it. Um, but everyone was gone. Uh, so that's what we normally do. So then our big like first event is Friday night, which is essentially almost the end, right? That's our big speaker and like dessert. And so we actually the night, the last night when all the teachers get together secretly in my hotel room and we eat, eat pizza. pizza. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, one of the things was how can we make this more cohesive, more community driven, more everyone feeling like a bigger part of the group. Right. So because the one thing we can't do that people have been asking for from the beginning is everybody share meals. We just, there's just no way to do it with the number of people we have and the, the yeah. hotel where we're staying. Yeah. So, um, so what we figured out was that if we do a, and I forget which night we decided, but early Tuesday, we're going to have a spin in on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Um, like a, like a spin in that I will go to, <laughs> um, on Wednesday night, we're going to have a gallery, mm -hmm. uh, which ideally this will be like our first, most people are there, not everyone, but a lot of people there by Wednesday will have the like a bar and gathering in that lobby, that spinner's lobby that we use. And then we'll open the gallery and kind of hang out. We'll have a little like meet and greet talk. Hi, everybody. Um, and then we'll have the gallery open during certain hours. Um, I'll put one of my kids in there to watch it. Um, and then we'll have regular spin-ins. And then on Friday night, we'll still have like in a thing, like the talk and the like hangout thing. Um, but more nightly spin-ins, more organization, more everyone getting together and hanging out. The marketplace. Oh, yes. That's hey, the marketplace. marketplace hours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So instead, and I know this seems weird, but it's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Instead of opening the marketplace on Thursday at noon, we're going to open the marketplace at on Thursday after classes and have one nighttime marketplace. So it'll be like, I forgot what we said. It was like five to nine. Yep. Um, so that the whole time no one's in classes, um, it'll be like an event. We'll have spinning out in the big lobby right in front of the marketplace because we get the foyer this time. Um, and I think I'm trying to negotiate. No them. dentists. No <laughs> dentists. Um, and so that is like the big one night time. And then the next day we'll go back to the regular opening at noon, but people will already have been there. And so they won't rush out of my class and not get the aha moment. Um, and, that, and hurt your feelings. And hurt my feelings, which clear, clearly I'm carrying this around. <laughs> um, and you know who did, who left is, uh, what's his name? Silver Fox. Oh yeah. He left to shop. Yeah. So now every time I see him online, I'm like, too bad you don't know how to spin woolen. <laughs> um, but yeah, that should be awesome. That is our Thursday night. Uh, then Friday night's the event. So we should have something every night. And I'm really excited yep. about that. And we talked about maybe having um, some people, I really listened to the feedback that we got from people 
we listened. I didn't say we at that point, Jillian, because I didn't want to make it sound like you don't normally listen, but sometimes I don't listen. Um, but I listened. <laughs> and uh, there was really good, like really good feedback and really good ideas. And you're breaking up. At least you're breaking up for me. You're doing the robot. Is it me? No, it's JC. Oh, there you go. It's Are all your kids on the Wi Fi? Okay. You're going to dial in. <laughs> Are you telling them to get off the Wi Fi as opposed to opening the um, door and yelling like I did once? Oh, she can disconnect and reconnect. One of. Uh, <laughs> Go away and come back. I'll tell stories about you. Um, one of the things that we're also going to do for the gallery is that people can bring things that they're really proud of. People can bring things that were in, you know, past ply away issues. Are you, do you think I'm going to lie? <laughs> You've got that face. Um, but we also want to have a theme for the gallery. Um, for something that's small, either for a yarn or a project, just an idea that any spinner who's coming to apply away can get done ahead of time and bring and put in the gallery. I think that will be really cool. It can be, you know, it could be 25 yards of a particular yarn, but we want as many people to participate um, in the gallery as, as want to, because um, I think that'll be a really cool thing as well as I am so excited for the nighttime marketplace because as a teacher, I hate rushing through the market. I tend to, well, it may not affect how much I buy, but when I'm just like rushing through the market, I grab everything as I go by. Um, but I didn't get any big bats because Maggie got all of those and her students. Yes, you did. Your students, you sent your students in to get all of those. I did, but it was my students. I only... I only bought five, <laughs> but I did give them to the students. Five, are they like 12 ounce bats? They're big, yeah. they're big, but we were spinning woolen, so it went fast. Yes, that's the best. And I, I wanted them to really get hooked. And they did, and then they chopped all the things. Yes. Yeah. Where's our girl? I don't know. I could talk about our Patreons. Um, I have, I think, a slide somewhere. Um, just a quickie, just because not because JC and I both are pretty terrible about marketing ourselves. We are it embarrasses us to talk about stuff that we're doing. Um, but both of us have hand spinning Patreons that are, um, you know, similar, but also different. JC has one that is, she has four different levels to her Patreon. Um, and I'll put the link in when we uh, put, the, um, put the recording up. And hers goes um, from, she does regular posts, but she also does like the greatest thing that she does is she has a live stream of herself 
crafting, um, either spinning or weaving. Now she is so obsessed with weaving. She also does a monthly class at one level, and she has um, a live Zoom to answer questions about the class. And my uh, my Patreon is just three levels, and um, it's, it's less live things because I'm not as comfortable as JC is doing that. Um, I always have a sample along going on. Right now we're doing uh, three ply and color and a spin and knit where I um, I spin something and knit with it and people are welcome to do it along with me or just watch me fail or succeed. And I'm doing socks right now, which is great fun. I have, um, I have this wonderful Cheviot fiber uh, that I'm spinning for socks. And I do um, a live Zoom every month at one level. And everybody gets a Discord entrance to um, our Patreon Discord where we get to uh, talk about anything that's going on, you know, in our fiber lives or um, just anything, any questions about what they, what you have about the Patreon. Where's JC? There she is. Hi. Are you on your phone now? I'm on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear me explain your Patreon? Was that okay? Was what else? This it feels almost like I had this plan, so I wouldn't have to. So you so wouldn't have to be embarrassed. Yeah, you hear me stumbling all over my own Patreon, but I talked about yours. <laughs> I think that my um, the cord that I found for my computer wasn't working because it was at one percent. I think it couldn't keep up with uh, having connected, and I don't have one in here, so I'm just going to do it on my phone for right now. It looks great on your yeah, phone. No, I think you did a really good job with both. Okay. And, you know, if you go to Patreon and just look up either of our names, I'll put the link in with the uh, recording. But if you look up either of our names, you'll find our our um, Patreons. And they're lots of fun. I have a lot of fun. It's I'm spinning way more than I've I've ever spun for myself yes. um, when I started doing the Patreon. Me too. In fact, that was kind of the inspiration for me doing it is that I feel like since since I started the magazine. um. And this is very kind of like, woe is me. And I get that. But when it becomes your job, that's what you do. And I haven't done a lot of personal fiber work. And so it's almost like I needed, I needed permission to make it part of my job to do things that I enjoy, which are teaching and spinning like I, I do a live stream, which we, we were talking about earlier about how weird it is. And I felt totally weird at first, but the live stream is totally just my own personal fiber work. But I have a now, right? You just have yes. the camera set up on your loom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I have an excuse now, like permission to do it, which is weird. So my idea was that it gave me, ideally, is that I'm going to hire another person at the magazine and be able to take some of this time from the magazine to doing my own personal fiber um but still without decreasing you, you know what I'm talking about oh I know I I'm doing mine so I can also do play with spinning and do my own experimenting and you know see other spinners it's so fun and so that I don't right now where my patreon is I I can um not travel to teach one time less a month. So that's oh. huge to me. So I have um, time to do other things and eventually I'll get around to writing that second book. <laughs> I, uh, I think we once talked about me writing something, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah. I was just telling Levi today that I've got to go through every like 18 months or so I have to go through um, the yearly schedule that I have that I keep my, for myself and adjust it because right now I feel like my schedule with the magazine is not like things change over 18 months and I'm not like optimal optimally using my time like I am always kind of up in the air about what needs to be done like in the last three months and I need to go through and like revamp the schedule for myself um and part of that is that I want to have work in there time in there because I'm really digging doing the classes and I realized that that's that was one of my favorite parts about my spinning career or life is the teaching mm -hmm. like 
although it's way easier because I don't have to leave my house, which is also something I don't like to do, um, is leave my house. But ever teaching now. and doing the samples from <laughs> classes. I mean, that is like the greatest learning that you can do. Yes. And yeah. I have never been a huge sampler. Like I used to, oh, I used to do the experiment. Don't tell, don't tell anyone. <laughs> I've always like done the experiments, but I would just kind of like tuck them up here in my head and I didn't keep like, um, so I'm really, I don't know. I'm really digging doing the classes and the, uh, the live stream still feels a little weird, like, because it's just you doing stuff and talking. And my oldest Florence was like, it's a little bit self-indulgent mom. <laughs> but people like to see what you're doing. Um, I had to watch Frank. I, I'm a member of Franklin Habits Patreon mm -hmm. and I had to watch his live streams. I'm like, okay, what does he do? And how do I judge it? And when I was watching and I was like, okay, this doesn't seem too self-indulgent. <laughs> okay. No, it's really interesting. It is really interesting. Yeah. Um, I did have to get new lights. Do you see my new lights? Those are the best lights, right? They make a soft light. No. Um, so it's not a filter. It's just my naturally glowing skin. Beauty. Good joy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm also a member of your Patreon. Yay. I should join yours and Franklin's. When do you have time? <laughs> to watch it all? It's true. I don't. Um, so that's what we have this time do you all have any let me open look at everybody see do you have any questions comments anything for us anybody it sure is good to see y'all it is right and thanks so there was a there's a book called infinite jest have you heard of this book yes david uh, Butler wallace yeah. it's um, this big yes <laughs> and one of the things in it is uh and it was it's years old right but one of the things he did was in the story, people get, they have, they start having telephone calls like this, where they can see each other, right? Like this was the first, we didn't have this yet, video calls. And then people started using, um, like they didn't want to be seen in the video calls. So they'd still do video calls, but they'd use uh, a picture of themselves. But I'm saying this because I just looked through and there's some pictures, um, which I think is nice because at least I get to see the face but it essentially evolved into at the end people have made these tiny um uh what are they called not diagrams um uh when you make it in a shoebox when you're a kid diorama diorama of themselves and their room and they put <laughs> that in front of the camera at the end like that's how people end up communicating at the end is a video call using a diorama of themselves in their office um that's i think it's fun. <laughs> um okay so, All right, yeah. friends, thank you so much for coming. And yes. we'll see you next time. Happy spinning. Bye, everybody.